Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. Good to have you here in the house of the Lord today. I can't think of a better way to start my week. I hope it's the same with you. As you know, our pastor is away. He's on a well-deserved vacation, and we're very happy that he's taking some time to rest and relax and renew. So I want to welcome everyone here, all of those who are here in person, all those who are watching and listening online. And a special welcome to anybody that's new here. If you're here for the very first time, we want to welcome you especially with a gift. After the service, if you exit to the left, there is a guest center and they have a gift for you to pick up and take with you. And you will be able to take that. Hopefully it will remind you of your time here with us today and uh, bring you back other Sundays and other times during the week when we have events. So um, I just wanted to mention that last Tuesday we had a very special service with the uh, Christians United in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it was awesome. Andy started us out with a, with a really great video that got everybody up and moving, and it was a wonderful time of worship. I just want to thank so many of you who participated. Matt stood, uh, stepped in and led the singing, and, and Lori, bless her heart, played the organ because we were missing a person. Uh, that happens sometimes. And uh, also, Roz did a great job coordinating with um, Lori Busel and also setting up the refreshments. They were absolutely delicious and wonderful, and everybody had such a good time. And our praise team were there. Um, closing out the service, and it was, it was a beautiful time of worship. And next time we have one, uh, it's only once a quarter. We hope that you will again in, uh, participate because uh, when it was here, we had probably twice as many people as we normally have at those services. So if you participate the next time, it will show the community who you are, that you are a child in Christ. So are you ready to get your worship on? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm told by Nancy Riley that there is a album out in the narthex from the fashion show. If somebody wants to stop and look at it, it was such fun. Everybody had a great time. Now, check your bulletin. Be sure to look at it front and back um, for anything that's not going on that you normally participate in because there are many groups that are taking a sabbatical for the summer, um, including one change to the bulletin. It's showing the Thursday night study with Jean. That's not happening. We had our last one last week, so you can cross that off the bulletin. And also, the first bike ride from the bike club happened, and they had a really great turnout and a great time, but they're having another one on June 12th. If you're interested, please contact Don Worley or the office, and they will give him your information. And um, I hope you all enjoy that. So let's all stand together as the praise team leads us in worship. The altar is open. The anointers will be behind the altar to anoint you and pray with you. Just let them know by raising your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathe your life in me you have been so so to me.
It's beautiful. It's a great way to enter into worship. You may be seated. <laughs> Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our friend, our comforter, we welcome you here this morning. We know that you are with us always. We pray that your presence will hover over us during this time, that you will bring us peace and comfort, that you will receive our worship, that your blessings will be upon everyone here on the praise team as they lead us in worship, on the speaker, Jean, as she gives us a message later. Lord, we ask you to bless each person who is watching, those who are helping to make everything happen, right here, the Agape team for keeping us safe. Lord, protect them also. Keep this place of worship a place where we do feel safe and that we will never be threatened. Take away anything that doesn't meet your requirements for a place of worship. Protect us, send your angels to the gates of this place let nothing enter these grounds that would harm us. We are your children, and we ask you to watch over us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we are going to have a children's story, and I think we have a couple of children, if they will come up. Jean's going to give the children's story. No, there's another one there. I see we have a lot. We said so we have some little ones, and I know we have a lot of big kids out there. 
and welcome to everybody. How are you this morning? Are you pretty good? I want to introduce you to someone. His name is Rudy the Rabbit. And he gets his name from a movie way back when called Meatballs. And there was a little boy there and he was running a race. And the fellow that was helping him, or like his coach said, run like Rudy the Rabbit, Rudy the Rabbit. So the whole time he was running, he was yelling, Rudy the Rabbit. Now, Rudy belongs to my daughter, and he happened to be at my house. She's had him since she was a very little girl like you and like you, little boy. And um, see, somehow over the years, he ended up at my house, and he's been sitting on top of the mirror in the spare bedroom. So every time she comes, she gets to see Rudy the Rabbit. So I said to her, I'd like to use Rudy the Rabbit for my children's moment. And she hesitated, and she said, OK. And then I said, but Rudy really needs a bath before I can take him to church. That water was so brown, you wouldn't have believed it. Do you like to take a bath? You do? You like baths? So I gave him a bath. It took him like all day to dry out. But he, see, his belly's kind of white now. And I washed him in Dawn. Did you ever take a bath in Dawn liquid? You know what that is? So when little ducks are in the ocean and they get oil on them and stuff, do you know what they wash? Dawn dish detergent, right? And they come out squeaky. I know that, but I don't use it. You know, but you don't use it? Yeah, well, it's good to know. And so anyway, Rudy had a bath, and he's nice and clean now. Now, my daughter's had Rudy. She's 50 years old now. I'm telling her age. She's not going to be happy with me. So that makes Rudy here about 45. He's pretty old, huh? Yeah. So, but it doesn't matter if you're young or if you're older, if you're 45 or if you're 75. Jesus is kind of like that dawn detergent, right? He washes us clean. Does that make sense? In our hearts. So when we give our heart to Jesus, we get washed clean. Like when you were baptized, were you baptized, Joe? No, yeah. And you take a shower. Good for you. That's wonderful. So anyway, Rudy is here, and he thanks you for having our children's moment today and for helping me share him with the people. He's nice and clean now, so he's going to last another 45 years. Then he may need another bath. But I couldn't put him in the dryer because she would have had a fit if I did that. So I had to let him air dry. So anyway. Thank you for sharing Rudy the Rabbit with me. And I have a little treat for you. I know a pastor usually has candy for you or something. So I have animal crackers. And I'm going to give you each some of those. You can share them or whatever. Whatever. Okay. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Lord, we, we thank you that for washing us clean. When we open our hearts to you, dear Lord, you just clean us of all of our sins and our worries, our bad thoughts, whatever we need to have taken away, dear Lord, you are there faithful with us all of the time. Watch over these two little ones, dear Lord, as they go about their day. Just bless them. We know how much you love your children. We're all your children, regardless of our age. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. I put Rudy back to bed. And greet one another as the children go to Sunday school. <laughs> Follow the bubbles. They may be small in numbers, but we're mighty to worship. If you gather back to your pews and remain standing for the reading of the scripture, I just want to say that Jean must have been very tiny when she had her child. There's no way she can have a 50-year-old daughter. No. <laughs> 
Our scripture reading today is 2 Corinthians 4, 13 through chapter 5, 1. Don't lose heart. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow in the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Word of God for the people of God. You, God. you may be seated. We do have a few praise reports. Uh, Bob White and Mike Zakumi are both home and doing well. <laughs> also, we want to lift up um, John Taylor. He has surgery tomorrow. Donna Turner uh, broke a vertebrae and is in a lot of pain. We, we pray for that pain to dissipate and that they're able to take care of the injury. Monty Snyder is sick with the flu and uh, is very miserable. We also want to pray for Jackie Davis on the passing of her son, Kevin. So please hold those prayer requests in your hands as Bobby comes and prays for us. Bobby. Thank you, Miss Irene, for, um, for those announcements and those, um, those prayer concerns. Um, as she mentioned, um, Jackie Davis, she normally attends our 9.30 service just to, to the left of me, her and Kevin, and been praying for Kevin for some time. And uh, sometimes you gotta tell yourself, you gotta be careful what you pray for. Yeah, we have a Heavenly Father that listens and that cares. Our, Hearts uh, goes out to Jackie and the entire Davis family. Also, um, Mary Cinco, um, she volunteers at our church thrift store. Um, I, I've been talking with her in the last two or three days. Her oldest grandson uh, committed suicide, so she, Mary's had a strong, she's had a strong faith. And um, like I said, I've been, been talking with her, keeping her encouraged. Her daughter, Lori, we want to keep Lori in our thoughts and prayers. Um, Mary's not certain on the service um, just yet. But we know in spite of all, we still have a, a loving and a caring God that, walk, that watches over us. Uh, I, I often say that he still showed us favor as I look out in our congregation. He allowed us to be here today. In the absence of our, our pastor, where they're, they're celebrating um, Daytona, we just hope that uh, during their communion down there, they, they reach somebody that, that forgot about who Jesus is. So we're looking forward to a praise report to come back from Daytona. I know the Jones family. It's just been a tradition of what they've done for forever. But I'm so thankful that our, our pastor has good fill-ins. We thank you, Miss Jean, for filling in today. <clears throat> Real quick, she said something about uh, the rabbit little story. Now, if <clears throat> she hoping that it lives another 50 years, but if I had it, it'll... <laughs> I have a little rice to go with it, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Ms. Dean, we thank you. We, we honor you today um, for the message that we're going to 
I receive also, I want to lift up Miss Pam. She's to my right here. She's got some surgery coming up on the 24th. Pam, just wave your, wave your hand. There she goes. Um, but what a woman of faith. She's already claiming that God's going to do what he do. And, and that's what I, I like about my church family. We have a strong faith, and we believe that we ask shall be given. So, Pam, we're going to be praying for you on the 24th. Also, the Starkey family is here. We've been praying for uh, his brother, Ron. He said that Ron's still struggling a little bit, but we know God has his hands wrapped around Ron. And Ron has a strong faith, he, he, and I spoke to him, and he believes that through our mighty God that we serve, he's going to be okay. So we trust in and believe in that um, God still performing miracles. He still pour out his blessing, and we're grateful. So as our music plays softly and then the our altar is always open as we state, you know, every week. Um, just feel free to come and stand in the gap um, for someone today. I'm, I'm just so honored to stand for Mary's grandson. Only God knows what we go through. Only God knows our problems. He's our answer to the cause. And we believe as we hear today that what a mighty God that we serve. We also want to lift up Monty. Um, we moved them to Vero a few weeks ago, and uh, we're hoping that Monty has a speedy recovery. Um, and, and, and may God keep his arms around Monty. So as we bow our heads, we shall go to our Heavenly Father. Father God, we, we come once again some with hearts are heavy than, more heavier than others. But today, as we, we worship together, all of our hearts are heavy. For our sisters and brothers in Christ, you allowed us to come once again to share our burdens with one another, to share our pain with one another, our problems with one another, our concerns, Father God, with one another. For what, your, for what your word says, when two or more gathered, you're here. And Father, that I ask that you just have your way. Fill the room with your grace. Come in the house with your presence. We ask that you go in hospitals with your healing. We ask that you go in nursing home, Father God, with your comforting. We ask that you, you go in county jails where somebody needs a breakthrough. Detention centers where someone don't understand that you're God, that you're our savior, that you're our healer, that you are our conqueror. Someone made a bad decision. Oh, but it's not the end. You're the author and the finish of our faith. And we believe today that you're still on the throne, that you're still performing miracles, that you're still healing, that you're still guiding. We thank you for guiding our footsteps today. And Father, the names that we lifted up today. Remember Jackie and the Davis family. Father, what a woman of faith. She has looked to you for all of her answers. She has called on you in her time of need. She has put in requests that you would just intervene in Kevin's life. We thank you for Miss Mary that attends our 11 o'clock service. We ask that you strengthen her. Sometimes, Father God, we don't understand why. And as I spoke to her, she don't understand why. But Father, your word says you're too wise to make a mistake, too just to do wrong. Father, I ask that you strengthen her daughter, Lori, as they prepare, prepare, Father, to say their final goodbyes. Be their strong tower. 
There will be days where there will be no one to call on. But you allow us to call on you in the morning hours, in the noonday, and in the midnight hours. While most are lying down resting, Father, you're still working. Even when we don't see it, you're healing. Even when we don't feel it, Father God, you give us comfort. Even when we don't understand of our sorrows. But the word says, what the devil meant for evil, you're going to get some glory out of it. And right now we say glory to, to God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do to those that put in their requests, to those that call on the name of Jesus, to those that are lost. We thank you for our pastor in his absence today. Father, we hope that as they serve communion, that they would touch someone for the first time. As Pastor Eddie reads the communion, take thee and remember me. But how could we ever forget? You gave your only begotten son. For your word says, whosoever will, let him come. We thank you for opening up the highways and byways for your children to come to a place where we can worship together, pray together, comfort one another together. And believe in the God that we serve. And as our worship team come, Father, we thank you for Miss June today, our messenger. Oh, Father, when she opened her mouth, we ask that you speak. Because when you speak, those that are going through hard times, they get an answer. When you speak, those that are in sickness get a better health. When you speak, those that are lost, they're found. I thank you for allowing me to stand in the gap today. I thank you, Father, for the strength that you invested in me. That I can stand and deliver the word of God to my sisters and brothers, to those that are tuning in online, those that are listening all over the world. May this prayer be comforting to somebody who needs comforting. May it be healing to somebody that's need healing right now. And we ask you again, Father God, be with our speaker today. Let our cup be true, let's run it over. As we receive the message today that cometh from above. And may all of God's people say. Thank you, Bobby. What a beautiful prayer. Stand, please, for the worship time.
That's so beautiful. You may be seated. We really appreciate the praise team and all the work they do. We ask you now, Lord, to take care of each one of us. Watch over us. Protect those who are going in for surgery. Keep our faith strong. Love us and care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Jean is going to be coming and giving us the message, and it's entitled, Don't Lose Heart. Take that to heart. We don't want to lose heart. We have a great God who does wonderful things for us, even in our darkest times. After the service, Jean will be in the back greeting you, so you can stop and say hi to her and, and greet her there. Jean? Good morning. Oh, it's so good to be here with you. I get dry, so sometimes I need a little drink of water. Holy and gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When Steve Willis gave the invocation last Sunday at the start of service, he mentioned that he had fallen. And I said, oh, it hurts, doesn't it? And when we fall, ooh. He was like, my hand, my side, my knee. But he's pretty much better now. He said he may have been down, but he got back up. And he said he didn't do it alone. Amen. He was good. And he felt that protecting presence of the Holy Spirit. And I felt the Spirit speaking to me as well through his words. He mentioned Matthew 18.10, part of the parable of the lost sheep. And it lets us know that one should never look down on any of the believers in Jesus. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. There's something about the courage of children, is there not? Innocent, yet they can be faced with challenges as well. They fall down, and they generally bounce up, back up a little better than we can, a little more resilient than the most of us. Little Eliana, we have one here that we pray for often. It's such a blessing to this church. Uh, she was in the fashion show with everyone. I know that she's very near and dear to your hearts. And about five years ago, I got to meet another little one facing such challenges I met her through my daughter. My daughter took me to their home to be introduced to them. Such courage in the family. She's led a challenging yet full life, this little one. And I commented to my daughter a few weeks ago. I said, you know, that little girl is so loved. I said, I think she's received more love in her few short years than some people receive in a lifetime. You know people like that sometimes? Emily, her name is Emily, she had a therapist from the time she came home from the NICU as a little infant. And she, that lasted for about three years until she actually aged out of it. But her mom gave me permission to share her story. She even gave me permission to show a couple of pictures of Emily. Emily wanted to become famous, as she called it. So her mom created a Facebook page for Emily. It's called Fight Like Emily. Emily needs a second lung transplant. Emily is seven now. Following Emily as she journeys through life, following a double lung transplant in 2019, she had her first at the age of two, while waiting for a second transplant in 2024. Her group was created in October of last year, so it's not even a year old yet that she's had her Facebook page up there and there, something's on there every day. Emily's pretty famous now. She has over 2.4 thousand Facebook friends. 
Some of them are from all over the world. Her mom said they have a map and they mark up, some are from Florida, um, where all of the states and the countries that Emily has friends. So I have a little video that I, that I gave to Andy so I can introduce her to you and a photo of her now. So the first one, she's probably maybe, I'm guessing, three. Um, and at, now she's like seven. So there's a photo of her as well. So go ahead. If we can see the video. That's, that's her now. I'm going to do an obstacle there she quiz is. today. Maybe can you come, come here later and play opera course with Peyton Parker. Oh, you want Kitten to come here and do obstacle course like the old days? Yeah, they do. Later? Yeah. yeah. I love you, Kitten. You love Kitten. Oh, my goodness. You are cute. Can you so, but, me pieces, so I... Yes. So we're not going to, um, Kristen's not going to come over today because, remember, germs? Oh, sick. Mm-hmm. But we're going to do our own obstacle course. Is that okay? Mommy, can we, can we give her our own, own, own presentator? You want to give Kitten a present? Yeah, an omen. Oh, that's so nice. Who but wanna... since she can't come over today, would you still like to do an obstacle course? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's an obstacle course? <laughs> so, that's Emily. Afflictions come in many forms, physical, emotional, and spiritual. Some 20 years ago, I woke up one morning and I got ready for work, and I headed off to Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And I was, I was driving, I was listening to the radio, and I thought, there's something wrong with the radio. It's like there's a speaker out. And so I'm banging on it, you know, and trying to make it work, right? So I finally get to the office and I put the phone up to my ear and I hear, can't hear anything on my left side. So I put it on my right ear and oh, that works. So it's not the phone. So I did go to the doctors and whatnot. And eventually after many tests and about three years, um, they told me that I would never get my hearing back again on my left side. I had heard what I had suffered from, eventually, what the diagnosis was, that I had suffered from an inner ear virus, and that's what caused the loss of my hearing. I thought, well, we've all heard enough about viruses, haven't we? We really don't want to hear about that. <laughs> I know, huh? But I think Paul probably feared something similar with his congregation in Corinth. Now, it wasn't a physical virus that they were dealing with, but what about a spiritual virus? Think about your computer, your iPad, or your cell phone. We pay a fee for virus protection, right, for our devices. In that case, a virus might be a piece of code that's capable of copying itself and typically has a detrimental effect, such as corrupting the system or destroying your data. The church at Corinth was not free from outside corruption or influences. They brought about learned hostility, suspicion of each other, and misunderstandings. They didn't have Norton or McAfee or PCmatic, right, to help with their virus. The church was composed of people who were from pagan backgrounds, Gentiles and Jews, with ethnic differences different customs, different traditions. The Corinthians were very accustomed to social class hierarchy. It was really big in the Roman Empire. They were susceptible to outside influence and an invasion of jealousy, disunity, discontent, and the threat of losing heart. Fortunately, what they did have was the Apostle Paul. Earlier in 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, We've been surrounded and battered by troubles, but we're not demoralized. We're not sure what to do, but we know that God knows what to do. We've been spiritually terrorized, but God hasn't left our side. We've been thrown down, but we haven't been broken. Relatable imagery is often used in biblical instruction. Here, the imagery of not being broken like a jar of clay. It didn't take me long to realize that those 
unbreakable corral dishes that you might have in your cabinets at home, but when dropped on a Florida tile floor, they break into a million pieces. Paul reminded them, our mortal bodies may be weak, fragile, transient. He certainly had been through his share of suffering and trouble. There was no Ocala eye care in his neighborhood as he was getting older and Paul was having trouble with vision. There was no rainbow hearing and balance for him to go to and no quick care stocked with antibiotics when he got sick or injured. Wear and tear on his physical body had taxed his strength, his faith, and his courage as well at times. But he sends them a message. They have been given a priceless gift, better than any drugstore, the knowledge of Jesus, his birth as predicted through scripture, his teachings, his death, and his resurrection. It was not all that many years since Pentecost. The Holy Spirit was alive and well, and he knew that in them they just had to turn back to God and to keep their eyes focused on Jesus. I may have moved away from the churches that I served up north, but they still carry a huge piece of my heart. They'll always be near and dear. Obviously, from Paul's letters, he had traveled on to form other churches but he carried the congregation of the Corinthians in his heart. He reminds them that their faith is in the resurrection is what will sustain them in times of trouble. This isn't just a letter of, hello, how are things going? It's a massive letter or letters of instruction. So Paul uses his own experiences and his troubles to hopefully help them understand. Paul reveals what upholds him when he's challenged. He said, like the psalmist in faith, Paul speaks. Psalm 116 is an example of one's declaration in a time of trouble. It's a song of thankful praise following deliverance from a crisis. God is gracious. It is he who makes things right, our most compassionate God. God takes the side of the helpless. When I was at the end of my rope, he saved me. In 2 Corinthians, earlier in, in 4, 9, verse 9, what they did to Jesus, they do to us. Trial and torture, mockery and murder. What Jesus did among them, he does in us. He lives. Our lives are at constant risk for Jesus, which makes Jesus' life all the more evident in us. While we're going through the worst, you're getting in on the best. Paul stands firm in his belief that no matter what is done to him, his faith, in his faith, God will raise him and give him full salvation. He will not be shattered. We're not keeping this quiet, he writes, not on your life. We'll sing it from the highest rooftops, just like the psalmist who wrote, I believed it. So I said it. We say what we believe. And what we believe is that the one who raised up the master Jesus will just as certainly raise us up with you alive. Every detail works to your advantage and to God's glory. More and more grace, more and more people, more and more praise. The resurrection is at the heart of the gospel. Had Paul been a composer, he might have written, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. The resurrection of Jesus was his assurance that those who believe in the Lord will also be raised. And third, Paul is working out his own purpose. He forms and he nurtures churches. I like the concept of a, of a background when it comes to our faith. When it comes to art, I thought of, if you watch the art shows, the first thing they start with is creating the background, right? To make whatever's there stand out. Uh, let's do a little, um, um, what's it called, ammonium white or something. And they plaster it on and they put a little black and the red and a little orange to make the sunlight. And then they get to the photo. 
Backgrounds can enhance and inform the main subjects and characters. The world around the subjects is just as important as the subjects in the artwork. They make the focal point stand out in ways that would otherwise not be possible. Backgrounds don't have to be complicated to be effective. If I took a picture of, of the praise band sitting here, you'd see the background of Christ behind them. That alone says a lot. We all have a background, a background of ideas and of beliefs that play a role in how we make our own judgments. If we have no belief in God or of what eternal life means through the sacrifice of Christ, and if we view the, the world as merely a mechanical process without spiritual value or purpose, everything will be colored by that outlook. Trouble will be a disaster, pain a calamity, and sorrow a tragedy. But if we have that Christian view, the sufferings of earth will be transitory. They'll be short-lived. I noticed an article in my newspaper from Maine last week, and a woman who was sitting inside of her car at a parking lot facing the Kennebec River said she looked up and she saw a young woman running across the park. She says she jumped over the railing. Police say they responded to Head of Falls Park around 4.30 for a welfare check involving a juvenile girl suffering from an unknown health crisis. She was airlifted to a hospital and her injuries from the fall left her bruised from landing on rocks, but they were not life-threatening. I wondered about her background. It would likely explain a lot. Fortunately, she was rescued and we pray that she's healing. It would appear that the waves of life were too much for her. The Kennebec River in Maine runs for about 150 miles. Its currents can be deadly. My dear aunt, who was in her 80s at the time, lost her family home in 1987 when that same river, the Kennebec, flooded. She had lived there for most of her life. They had been through many floods before. It was rather a repeated occurrence for it to get into the basement. But in 1987, the water rose to new heights. Under the eaves, the water came in, and eventually it came up to the house, literally lifting the house off of the foundation and carrying it from Waterville to Augusta and beyond. Jars of clay, houses of wood, right? Um, they're, uh, they're not um, indestructible. When we went down to see what remained, the trees were bare and the leaves washed off and litter hanging from the barren branches. It was heartbreaking for us, and I can only imagine what it was for her. Now, I know I'm speaking to the choir here in Florida, where I've only been a resident for three years, but many of you have experienced how wind, water, storms, and hurricanes can wreak havoc with our lives. My aunt was a perfect example of being strong in the face of adversity. She was a woman of great faith and courage. She never lost heart. Through our outer self is wasting away. My neighbor once commented to me that too many in our neighborhood were moving out due to illness or from passing away. Her husband piped up and he said, well, we live in a community. We're already halfway there when we move in. <laughs> our inner self though however is being renewed day by day for this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen for the things that are seen are transient but the things that are unseen are eternal I heard a couple saying a couple of weeks ago I'll always have your six o'clock. Have you heard that? And I thought about it, what does that mean and where did it come from? I had an idea, but I wasn't sure. During World War I, pilots used the clock system to describe directions while flying. 12 o'clock meant straight ahead, three o'clock to the right, four, six o'clock was directly behind, and so on. And in combat, enemy pilots would try to get behind your tail and shoot you down. 
but you trusted your wingman or your gunner to protect your six. When someone tells you that they've got your six o'clock, it means they're watching your back. Fourth, Paul knows that God is working on Paul's purposes, and so he endures it for the benefit of the church. Despite all the challenges, his ministry brings him not just purpose, but joy. So we're not giving up, the scripture says. How could we? Even though on the outside, it often looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside, where God is making new life, not a day goes by without his unfolding grace. These hard times are small potatoes compared to the coming good times, the lavish celebration prepared for us. There's far more here than meets the eye. The things we see now are here today, gone tomorrow. But the things we can't see now will last forever. It all works out to the glory of God. We pay a fee for virus protection. So how do we protect ourselves when it comes to our spiritual life personally? And also as a loving Christian congregation, Jesus paid our protection fee. Don't forget it. What's the assurance in Paul's message? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Paul has the assurance that Christ will raise him from the grave into which his labors he is now moving and will bring him with Corinthian Christians into his presence. That's Psalm 116.10. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. When you feel like the waves of life are going to overtake you, and when it comes to your Christian faith, you're tired of swimming against the current of Western culture, don't lose heart. Rest easy. God will always have your six o'clock. Are you, are you willing to live and fight like Emily? Luke 18.1. Always pray and do not lose heart. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are so blessed to be your people. Like the early Corinthians, we sometimes lose our way. It's so easy to lose heart, Lord. Let us take comfort in the words of Psalm 139. You have surrounded me on every side, behind me and before me. You have placed your hand gently on my shoulder. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jean. That was beautiful. It's a great reminder. Don't lose heart like little Emily and our own little Eliana. May we always have the faith like a little child and grow in the Lord. May we stand now and worship with the praise team. Surrender. 
So now, let us just say, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for being with us. Take care of us as we leave here today. Watch over each one of us. We pray for your presence. You've got our six. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>